So I'm going to show you how to make a box plot. Um, first of all, I have the pretest and I have the post-test data. So a person that took the pretest and got a 30% finished on the post-test at the end of the semester with a 90 um, and so on. Okay, so this is one, one person that has taken the test two different times um, before and after the course and as you can see all the post tests are higher than the pretests so that's a good sign right so I'm going to show you how to make a box plot we're going to make a box plot to try to figure out um, if there is an outlier so if we go to insert and the histogram box here and you can go to box and whisker and you can change the chart title if you want to, uh, which I would prefer if you did that, so you can label the data better. Um, Pre-test and post-test uh, box plot is fine. Um, you can see that for the first column, you, the first box matches that information. The lowest score was a six, or the highest score was a 69, and the lowest score was a 30. Um, that shows the whiskers, so this shows the range of data, and most of it fits inside here. Okay, so and it's a pretty um, focused in in the middle. Okay, so then you have um, this post test data, and you can see first of all, hey, this is all sitting. If you notice, this is all sitting above, right? There's nothing. There's there's no scores that uh, overlap here, so that's a good sign. As far as like the pretest post test scores, your um, post test scores are higher, and they have they actually have a smaller uh, variation, which is good. Um, so the whiskers again represent the top score, which is ninety two. And the bottom score looks to be like a 73. Um, so I wanted to also show you, I apologize if you hear my dog barking in the background. Um, I wanted to also show you what it would look like if there was an outlier, because there aren't any outliers that represent here. And let's just say put a negative here. There we go. And then it pops up right here. See? So the reason I put a negative 88 is because that's going to be, for one, definitely not um, a proper entry. So negative 88 isn't a percent that you can get on a test. So you can get a 0 to 100. If you have something other than that, then obviously the data was entered wrong. Um, there's some sort of problem that you need to address with this particular observation. So we can go back, we can look at this and we can say, hey, um, that's incorrect. I can go back, check the um, post-test scores and correct this um, to, to remove that, uh, that weird um, dot, right? So, but in other types of data, there could be, so um, say income, there is a, a likelihood that there are going to be, um, if we took the income of the United States, you're going to see like a huge a range and there's likely going to be some uh, of very few people that make billions of dollars. <laughs> so, um that indicates an outlier, right? That doesn't necessarily mean you take that out. It just all depends on what you're studying. It all depends on what your goal is with um, the information. But let's say you're looking at um, basic income for the United States. It, would, it wouldn't make sense to grab the mean, um, the average, um, including those billionaires because they're so far away from what the average person is that it would um, it it would impact the data way too much and that's a lot of times why you see median income
Okay. Well, I hope this helps. And if you have any questions, just please let me know.